everyone, Port S here, welcome to part 2 of our BMAX 124 BMW E30 M3 video build. So, first part, we did the bodywork, we got that all prepped, primed, painted, clear coated, etc. Got our wheels painted. This one today, we're going to deal with the chassis, the running gear, uh, we're going to get the interior done, get the wheels mounted, some modifications here and there, um, and get this ready for part three which will be the finish of it um and get this build done so it's quite a long one today but i managed to whittle it down it was going to be two separate videos but i managed to get it down to one video so hopefully i've left enough content in there for, <laughs> for it to be interesting and educational in a way without waffling on too long about stuff i've already done and shown in the past so hopefully everything's pretty clear if you've got any questions at all just ask away at the end of the video so let's dive in and let's have a look. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos you now have the chance to support the video content creation by using patreon or the paypal me link in the description down below all the videos always remain free to watch this is just your chance to help support the videos right then here we go we've got all our running gear to sort out our chassis and our interior as well so we start off with the uh, obligatory part cleanup so not a huge amount of parts to these. This is one of the reasons I quite like this kit. It's quite a nice, quick, simple build. The way it's been set out, and because of the kind of car it is, uh, obviously it's a DTM car, touring car, it's pretty simplistic inside. Uh, and even the running gear, all pretty simplistic. So clean up isn't too bad. Quite quick. The parts are quite well molded. Not a lot of seam lines to remove. All pretty cleanly done. So using a combination of Ultimate Modern products, thinny sticks, sponges and buffers, we can get all the parts cleaned up, mounted and ready for primer, lickety split, very, very quick. So as I say, seam lines, of course, the seam lines in every part of the plastic kit, um, even the best of them come with them, but they're quite non... Uh, what's the word? They're not very prominent, but they are there. So you can either use a sander, a knife blade, whatever you want. Uh, for me, I like to go around, use a sander to get rid of the majority, and it uh, gives a nice smooth finish. Now, the standard exhaust um, is a DTM style exhaust, and I didn't want to do a DTM tailpipe. So I tried to straighten out the original kit one by heating it up and straightening the end from the DTM up curl to a straight it didn't work very well so what i decided to do was cut off the existing exhaust use some plastruct um, hollow tubing and create my own straight cut uh, dual exhaust so we're going to take off the uh, existing exhaust we could use a razor saw here but we're going to sand this smooth anyway so it doesn't make any difference so we sanded the end of the exhaust smooth we sanded the end of the tube smooth and we're going to cut off two sections just going to drill it out, make sure it's all nicely drilled out, and then we can ream the end as well to thin the end of the tailpipe. I've got a couple of pieces here put next to the existing part, which are just a little bit too short. So we've had a little bit of extra length, and what we'll do is we'll sand them, straighten the edges up, have a quick test fit. Once I'm happy, we'll ream the ends out to thinner. Here's my reamer. So all that does is thin out the very end of the tip to make it look more realistic like so there you go there's the kit one on the left so what i've done is i've drilled that out uh, we've made the other one i'm just going to quickly add a bit of extra thin and glue it all together like so there we go see we're not quite straight at the end so we get all this glued up We'll get it test fitted in place, make sure it all fits properly, and then we'll straighten up the ends, ream them out again, and get it all sorted. What I'm checking here is the length. I want to make sure it's A, sticking out just enough, and B, that it sits into the rear volante properly, which it does. So we're all good to go there. So that can be left now. 
Very short there because I don't want to drag on about it. We've got a lot to get through today. But there's all the parts cleaned up. I'm mounting them on cocktail sticks by various methods, either through holes, uh, popping the stick into a recess, or drilling out the end of my little battery powered drill, which you can't get anymore, unfortunately. But I'm sure there's other drills out there. And we pop a cocktail stick in to mount everything for primer. So we're in a booth. We've got some Tamiya pink primer. We've got our chassis. So we're going to paint this red. We could have done this at the same time we did the body. But I find it could be a little bit too much to manage. This won't need clear coating. Uh, we've got the roll case to do as well. So yeah, we'll do them both now. Less stress. So this is thinned about 60% with Tamiya level. Uh, sorry, lacquer thinner of retarder. We're through the 0.2 mil, I think it is. If we can see the tip, I will tell you. I think it's a 0.2 mil apex. We're at about 18 psi. Um, put several like coats down, getting all those recesses, angles everywhere we can. This is after about three light coats. As you can see, well and truly pink primed. There we go. Great paint, sprays really nice, apex performing. For say it's actually the point three apex that I can see the needle guard. That's left to dry. We've got our Mr. Surfacer now with the same airbrush. 18 PSI, couple of light coats onto our exhaust with our custom tips. And there we go. Easily primed. A couple of coats of this, a couple of coats of the uh, the pink on the body, two or three on the body, chassis, sorry, two or three on the uh, all the black parts, and then we've got some uh, primer down on all the running gear parts as well. So the reason I use Mr. Surfer, I like it as a primer. I don't think it's the best black primer. I do prefer our ultimate black primer, but I do like the colour of it. I think it's a great colour, and quite often I'll leave it as the base colour. So, second coat in on the exhaust. Probably only needs two coats, this one. Putting it on, not really thick, but quite wet. Um, to fill any micro scratches in we might have. Looks like we're putting a lot down, we're not. Very little paint going down. And then the suspension struts, I want to do these in yellow. So, we're priming these in Tamiya Grey. A couple of light coats, just work our way around. And then this for speed, if you're not confident in your airbrushing. Don't apply your paint this quick, but I know how far I can push this. We've got our Tamiya TS86, I believe it was. Uh, same colour we use on the body. Two or three light coats on the chassis. Again, make sure we get all those angles and recesses fully covered. And then some um, LP5. Tamiya LP5, semi-gloss black and all the running gear. Decided I wanted more of a semi-gloss look, so we've gone with this. Uh, this is pre-thinned in the bottle. I've already thinned it. About 70% of the time, you lack a thinner of retarder. And again, 0.3 mil Apex, um, about 18 PSI. Tamiya LP8 now. Thinned about 60% of the time, you lack a thinner of retarder. Several light coats. It is going to take a lot of light coats to build this up. So probably four or five light coats just to get the yellow down. Don't flood it on. Yellow, white, and red can be troublesome paints to get down. And then on our exhaust, we put a couple of coats down of Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Stainless Steel 2. Thinner with the Rapid Thinner. Absolutely beautiful colour. One of my favourite colours at the minute, this. It's what we've done the wheels in on the BMW as well. And uh, yeah, they're very, very nice paints. So there we go. A couple of light coats on there. Whilst we had the Super Metallic out, I thought I'd do the brake disc in it as well. These are going to be, have a wash on them, so they're going to get nice and stained. Often an armor wash, and we're going to paint our calipers a different color. So for two birds, one stone, let's use the Super Hobby Metallic on this. So while those parts are drying overnight, I thought let's make a start on the interior. Now we get a single seat with the car, but I needed two seats for my one because mine's a road going fast car, uh, road car, track day car. So I had these spare seats out of an old Subaru kit I had. Uh, we're going to remove the mount for the original seat, and we're going to mount both these seats directly on the floor. So we're going to flock this interior. So we cut out all the mount with our cutters, and then we've got our trumpeter chisel. And we're just going to remove all the excess plastic very carefully. Take your time with these things. Keep your fingers well away. Uh, and obviously, because we're going to flock this, we don't need to worry about getting it perfectly smooth. Roll cage, I debated whether to add the roll cage and thought I might as well. We can add it in there as red. A uh, little bit of a accent detail in there. Uh, pretty simple to clean up. On all the exterior parts, we can get our ultimate sanders on there. 
the sponge and the buffer and polisher. And then on any parts that are a bit more tricky to get, we just use the sharp edge of the knife and just lightly scrape away the mold seam as we go. Uh, it's a little bit boring, but once you've done it a few times, it becomes really quick and you can, uh, you'll soon fly through it. Just watch yourself. Don't cut yourself like I did through this. And then we can glue it together. So a couple of dabs on the front bit. Look at your instructions so everything's orientated. We're going to pop these bits in first. So once we get these pieces lined up, we can pop it into the side, use the locating holes inside, and then build up the rest of the cage as we go. As you can see, get the other side on, get it in place. It takes a bit of finesse to do this. You should get used to doing it the more times you've done it. And then a couple of wipes over with some Tammy Extra Thin. This is my mix with PlastiWeld, 50-50 mix with EMA PlastiWeld. Makes a hotter glue, but it dries a little bit slower. And then the cross braces in the center. Can be fiddly. You'll get used to doing it, and you may find it easier like this just to take some of the parts out. We basically use the sh chassis as a jig to get the, um, the roll cage correct. So we just line it all up. Like so. And then hit it with more extra thin. Let this wonderful glue do its job. Keep it away from your fingers. Just hold it for a few seconds. And it'll soon grab a hold of what you're doing. And then the last piece. Just in place. Glue it in place. And then pop it on the chassis into the locator holes. And that'll make sure it's all square and true. Just don't glue it into the chassis just yet. And put that to one side, let that dry. Now, the interior. I wanted to flock this, but I thought we're using bossing powder today. It means I don't have to go outside, don't have to knock around. So we've got some Revel Matte Black. We've got some embossing, craft embossing powder I got off Amazon. And we're just going to put down a fairly wet, generous coat of black enamel. That will go nice and sticky. And then we can use that to apply the embossing powder to the floor pan. <coughs> Do excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold at the minute. My throat is rather dry. Just a perfect day to do a 40 minute voiceover. Ugh. But yeah, we get this down. Not Don't want it pulling in corners because then the embossing powder will pull. If it does pull, use the brush to drag it out. Wipe the brush off. But as you can see, we've got a nice wet coat there. Let it tack up for a minute or so. And we're going to load up our tea strainer with the embossing powder and just tap it over. This is much easier than the flocking, but the flocking does look better by quite a long shot as well. This is a good effect. It does work. It's a lot easier to apply and a lot less mess, although you might not think it in a minute. It is. But the flocking does look a lot better. So... I'm going to figure out some way. Somebody had a good idea about using some sort of um, sandblasting booth um, to keep it in there. So it might be a good idea. We'll look into that. Because the last time I did it outside, I literally lost half my flock to the wind. It blew away. Uh, but this effect's not bad. I don't think it covers quite as well. There was a few blotchy bits. But again, when you're done, put it on the paper. Put it back in. You'd be surprised just how little you actually use. It will go a long way when the wind's not blowing it away on you. Seat. Now, we're going to uh, micro balloon these. Now, enamel. Again, we're going to paint them red. So, we've got red enamel paint. I did try this with PVA. Do not use PVA for the micro balloons. It basically turns into a flowery mess. I don't mean floral. I mean, um, it just made an absolute mess. So I very quickly stripped it off. A little bit of UMP airbrush clean and a brush. It came off very quick. And we're going to go the old route of using enamel. So again, exactly the same way we did the flocking inside the car. We don't want to pull up, but we need enough of it there to actually grip the micro balloons. And the micro balloons is a whole different kind of material. The tiny little glass fiber balloons. Make sure you've got a respirator on doing this. Don't be breathing this muck in. And all we're going to do is just add some texture to the seat. It's really easy to do. 
makes a holy mess. Do not sneeze and blow the stuff everywhere. That is for sure. But we'll just tip it on, tip it off, tap the excess off, and repeat it on the other seat, and job done. And there we go. It's just a case going round. Don't worry, you're going to pick all this back up in a minute, so you're not going to waste it. And like I say, once this is dried, it gives it a nice texture. There we go. Let's dry for mm, about 12 hours, I'd say. So here we are. Pink primer again. We're going to paint it red. So we're going with the pink primer again. A couple of light coats over the seat. So the micro balloons will apply the texture. So that will allow, um, give it a fabric look. Uh, we primed our roll cage in pink as well. And our dashboard in Mr. Surfacer. Black. Pretty standard. Uh, I honestly wouldn't show this most of the time, but I know I'm always going to get new viewers. So I've always got to cater to that. I know you regular viewers have seen me prime stuff a million times, and that's why I try to keep it as short as possible. Then we've got our TS86, my autofocus on my camera. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. It is the texture paint from Zero. So this is textured red. This is what we used on the Ferrari engine covers on the 288, if you remember that one. I'm just going to put some light coats down. Make sure you've got a good spray booth. I've got an AS300 bench vent, a good respirator, some ventilation, and a glove on because you don't want to breathe this stuff in. It's not nice paint. It gives me horrendous headaches, so I always make sure to follow the precautions. Go through our 0.2mm apex at about 18 psi. And we're going to put some light coats down, building it up away we go. And then I like to bring the airbrush away a little bit to let the. Um, counter-effective paint technique we don't normally want to use of letting the paint dry before it hits the model and causing a powdery effect because that's what we kind of want on this one so two or three coats on the seats two or three coats of the ts86 on the roll cage and uh, another job done nice looking roll cage this one i know it's it's all tubular metal but i always think it's quite a pretty one on the m3 functional life-saving um, it's not massively viewable for the M3. We look at existing models are built, but it's there. Steering wheel, we've got some of the black texture paint. Do apologize about my camera. It does still play up from time to time. It's a pain in the backside. But as you can see, nice, nicely focused on the airbrush, not necessarily on the part I'm trying to show. But we've got some textured zero black paint here. Uh, we've masked off the center of the steering wheel, and we're just going to add some texture to the steering wheel. Um, good suggestion by my buddy Alan for this. So cheers, Alan. Thought we'd give it a go. And there we go. Next day, everything's dried. We've got our Edding 571 silver marker pen. These are very, very good pens. As you can see, we've already applied them to the pedals, like so. And now we're going to apply it to the gear shifter. So whenever you use any of these pens, any marker pens at all, um, especially highly metallic ones like these or molotovs pull the paint through first you see i've used a, a paint cup there just pull it through fresh paint otherwise it won't be as metallic as it thinks it's caught me out a few times this and it'll keep the flow of the pen going well but these are good little pens these not quite as chrome as molotov but sometimes we don't want that true high chrome finish so it's perfect for things like this we want a metallic, aluminium look, whatever. Uh, and it just saves painting and masking tiny little parts like this, which would take longer to clean the airbrush than do this, to be honest. So once you've done this, pop to one side. These do take a long time to dry. So keep them to one side and out of the way. Now, one problem we've got on this kit, on the DTM car, is it sits with its wheels in the arches. And I didn't want that look... Um, on this kit I've got some pictures I'll pop them up so we need to raise the suspension on the car just a little bit we actually do it too much on the back and I have to uh, edit it later on but what I've done I've cut out some of the circular uh, rod I think it's the exact same stuff we use for the exhaust we can pop it into the locating point uh, the existing point paint it red and it will look normally different now luckily 
all the top parts of suspension. Um, you can kind of not bodge it, but you can kind of do it so it still works. I've done it before. Uh, I did a Rothmans rally car out of the DTM car a good while back before the rally car B Max kit came out. And the way I did it was I cut the suspension stuff in half and added some rod in between, but it didn't look very pretty. So I thought this was a better option. So, like I said, we get the front ride height absolutely perfect. The back is still a little bit high, so I trim it down later on um, to get it to sit right. But it's basically the same process uh, used here. So I've got a little bit of extra thin, apply a little bit. Yes, it's painted. It will still glue. Don't you worry. It will melt right through that paint. And then we line up this. So we've cut it, we've sanded it, and we've reamed the end out a little bit so that the existing part fits in. And it literally fits in perfectly uh, and then like i say we've got two subframes that fit over the top the back one's not a problem because it just angles slightly more the front one we have to angle it up and it, it basically doesn't quite locate on its rear mounting point but i've done it before it works perfectly fine it doesn't look the best if you look really close but this is more function over looks uh, i need to get this to sit right because it was just too low in its arches it was actually foul on the wheels and there we go there's all four in place so we'll let those dry and then we'll come back in and give them a touch up but as you can see the existing part literally will fit in there no bother at all seats so these have dried now overnight we've got some sparko decals at my spare decals pop them on line them up hit them with some ultima strong decal solution and then some extra strong later on to get them to fully set into the seat and there we go dice them with death with the uh decal solution out the holder there i recommend not doing that but i am both brave and stupid and there we go let those set and uh job done now quick word from myself and my uh, ultimate modern products head on over to www.umpretail.com and help support mine and lee's business because without ultimate modern products there would not be any international scale modeler and all the videos we put out there and the facebook page and the forum we run we stock loads and loads of modeling products including all our own products of our apex airbrush our pigments primers sanders thinner and cleaner tools our wonderful storage system, polish system, and weathering washes. We also sell modeling tools, paints, model kits, glues, solutions, fillers, weathering products, aftermarket, and of course, international scale modeler merchandise and gift cards. And all orders made before 12 midday get next day delivery in the UK, and international orders are shipped within 48 hours. So, we need to paint up our engine. Um, I typically use Vallejo. Vallejo? Vallejo model color for this model air sorry but i've got a load of citadels and i found my old chain mail i thought let's give it a go and these are much better brush paints um this is what these things are made for so a couple of light coats don't try and get it all in one coat we'll put down a thin coat to begin with uh, and then come back in for a second coat 15 minutes or so after it's dried but just go around slowly carefully methodically bodge up the paint job but yeah, these citadels are beautiful brush paints and cover really, really well. So, like I say, very old bottle of uh, chain mail. This must be about, it's probably about 10 years old, believe it or not. Very old. So we'll do that. We'll do what I think is the oil cooler. I think there's an oil cooler on the back uh, as well. It's pretty much the only detail we're going to paint underneath. As you can see, our engine and transmission looks great. I've done the drive shaft, prop shaft. Um... In silver but i painted it black later on uh, because i thought it looked a little bit better and there we go just a bit of careful brush painting beauty of this water-based paint over lacquer paint is you can get it back off uh, either using a cocktail stick or a cotton bud so we've got some of the ts86 on the lid um, of the tub it's been stored in i've left the lid open for a good 10 minutes it thickens the paint up a touch makes it a bit easier we're just using a micro brush just to load it up to cover it up so kind of to hide our sins in a way and jobs are good now first time doing this 
Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Stainless Steel. I've never brush painted this stuff, and I thought, right, okay, I need to match the exhaust we sprayed the other day. I wasn't going to mask this off. I've done that before. It takes forever. So I thought, let's brush paint it. Let's see how it goes. So for a lack of paint, it actually brushed on really well. Straight out the bottle. As you can see, I'm just using the uh, the lid upturned for a nice flat Tamiya brush. Uh, we're just going round and applying a nice thin coat. Obviously, we won't be able to go over this twice. So you need to kind of do a mixture of loading it up without flooding. But I was very impressed just how well it actually brush painted, to be honest. Coverage is good. These are beautiful paints, so highly pigmented. It's just a shame there's a lot, not a lot more colours in that super metallic range. There's, there's about eight, I think, seven or eight. Um, and they're all wonderful colours. Absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love this stainless steel colour. Um, it's by far become my favourite colours. But like I say, brush paint on, absolutely fantastic, no problem at all. So just take your time, don't keep going over it because it's lacquer. It will reactivate the lacquer underneath if you're not careful. And there we go, that's looking good. Happy with that. Like I say, if you get it while it's still fresh, get a cocktail stick, you can literally wipe it off any flaws. Discs, so we, like I say, we painted these in stainless steel again. We're gonna brush paint the TS-86 on because I wanted red calipers. Couple of light coats on this. I'm not gonna get it all in one go. So just load up the brush, be as gently as you can. Paint it, put it to one side to dry for 10 minutes, come back, uh, load up the brush again, and just lightly paint on and uh, get the calipers looking a nice deep red colour. Very smart. Really nice calipers on this. The discs are really good. Although you can get a PE set for this, and it is kind of worth adding. I think the kit parts are really good as well. The beautiful disc out of the box. Um, sadly, you're not going to see them hugely through the Alpina rims, but they're there. We know we've done them. We know they're going to look pretty good. Same on our suspension struts as well. We're going with red springs on this. So again, just some careful brush painting using our Windsor Newton Series 7. And there we go. A couple of light coats on each one of those. And then our uh, differential drive shaft, prop shaft, etc. We've got some aqua colour from Ravel in gloss black to our CV gaiters or CV boots. Uh, just again, to add a little bit of detail and a little bit of interest. So we're painting the prop shaft black, the drive shafts black, and the CV boots in uh, gloss black. Centre of the hubs, we're going to do in LP61. It is, it's LP61. Um, Couple of light coats, just work our way around carefully. And again, just adds all a bit of visual interest. You're not going to see it once it's on, but it's part of the model making. So it's part of the enjoyable part we should like. And again, some of the gloss black on the steering rack as well. Just add a little bit of tonal interest and variation. And then we've got our Tamiya panel liner, enamel wash. Gonna give everything a wash, leave it overnight, and then we'll come back the next day, remove as much of the wash as we possibly can. What this will do, not only add a bit of depth to all the details, it'll cover up a few of those little mistakes where maybe got a little bit too much paint, um, whatever. So yeah, yeah, catch yeah, two birds, one stone. Adds a bit of detail and uh, hides a bit of those um, mistakes up as well. So just go around, don't need a lot of it. Wipe the brush off, same kind of way you use extra thin. Load the brush, wipe it off, use the capillary reaction to let it carry itself round. But it does add a nice bit of depth. Like I say, we'll let this dry overnight. Needs about half an hour, 40 minutes normally, depending on the temperature. But this was the last thing I was doing. 7 p.m. on a, I'm going to guess, hmm, Saturday evening, I reckon this was. And yeah, we'll leave her overnight and we can deal with it the next day, which I think I did on the Sunday live show, funnily enough. Great washes. Just a real shame they're not readily available actually in the UK. It's a real shame. And again, I'll break this. Lots of nice detail on here. 
So we load it up, get all the recesses filled, all the detail on the caliper filled, and then same on our suspension as well. Like so. All adds to the weather effect, adds depth and a bit of detail. And then our differential at the back. We're going to use a little bit of black on the metal and then some grey on the black part. So we'll repeat that on some of the other parts, like the dashboard, and what have you on the interior later on. Next day, we've got some Winsor Newton Sansador, odorless mineral spirits, onto a cotton bud. I'm just going to go around and gently remove all the excess wash, leaving all that nice detail and the recesses showing. And it does app. Add a nice bit of depth. It also stains the paint a little bit, so it gives it more of a worn look, makes it look less in your face. Uh, so it's a worthy step to do. Uh, I see a lot of people build models that have no washes anywhere at all, and that's fine, that's personal choice, but they do look better with a bit of wash on. It doesn't have to be heavily weathered, but the likes of these brake discs look so much nicer when they're weathered. They really do add so much more depth. Uh, total variation to all the metallic parts makes them look less sterile and uh, yeah I'm not always the world's best uh, weatherer but I'll just try and add a little bit of detail here and there when I can and the panel line washes being enamel washes are perfect for this job so just take your time don't go too rough because you can take paint off if you're not careful It will rub off, especially if it's a water-based paint. Uh, not, they're not quite as resilient as lacquers. So they will burn off if you're not very uh, gentle. So just take your time. But you just look at the parts like this rear differential. It just adds so much depth to it. Just makes it more visually interesting and appealing. Just have a look. An excess wash we've not removed. And there we go. Now we can start assembling some of the parts. We've got poly caps to go in the wheels, which we don't really need because our wheels don't have locator studs like the standard ones, but I'll pop them in anyway, just as a matter of course. All four of them in place. And then we've attached our steering rod to the front two front sections, line them up. We've got our front subframe, just a quick test fit. Yeah, that's going to fit about right. And then we grab some CA glue. Load everything. So what I decided to do here is go the other way. So I've attached the suspension to the subframe. They are a nice tight fit in there, so they hold themselves on quite well. Obviously, we don't want to glue these in place because then we need them to move. So we just push them through. Friction will hold them in there just great. Then we can add some glue, and then it's a simple job, I say simple, of lining it all up. And getting it in place. You got the front locators on, the two struts in place, make sure everything's lined up perfectly. So tweezers can come in handy here. Get it in, push it down, and then spin it around to the other side. See the other suspension looks quite good. We painted the very bottom hubs black as well, using the Vallejo model colour. And there we go, there's those in, and then the rear section glued in place in a similar way. So we've got the differential prop shaft drive shafts to go in place first. He's locating quite positively. Two little locator points at the back and then at the front just there. And as you can see, that's why I painted the prop shaft black in the end. Drive shaft, your Americans, drive shaft, I call them prop shafts. The center shaft running down the middle of the car, prop shaft. And then the rear suspension struts will be glued in place. So these need to be popped in and make sure they are straight on all the different angles required. Now, because we've raised the suspension, you need to lift up the drive shafts a little bit to get everything in place. Have a little look, make sure we have everything right. Probably chatting away on the Sunday show as well. Let me line that up. Get that one in place. And then we can get our rear 
uh, suspension mount and lock it all together. So the rear one's quite good. So a bit of CA glue on the back. Luckily, like I say, on the back, the subframe for this, the mount, um, sits at an angle anyway. So we're just putting it at slightly more of an angle. So the back doesn't really matter as much. It all fits in pretty well, pretty well, to be honest. So make sure we got it orientated the correct way. Like so. Pop it in place. Get the front section on and then get the back ones in. They have nice positive locator points on the suspension. A bit tricky when you're ham fisted. What a buffoon. And there we go. Pop them in. Jobs are good. In. We're all happy there. So, like I said, the back one goes in no problem at all. Front one, a little bit of a compromise between the looks, but it is what it is. Great discs now. So, Bit of a CA glue around the edge, make sure you get all the right discs and right way around. Refer to your instructions, get them in, make sure everything's straight, orientated right. As you see, I'm just manipulating that a little bit because it wasn't quite straight. There we go. Do all four of those. There we go. And now I noticed we had to just drill out the very center of the hub a little bit. The scale production wheels come with very short but slightly wider um, locators. So we had to just widen a little bit. And these are going to need CA glue in, in place, sadly, because it's a very, very short locator. Uh, and it will literally, the wheel will fall off every two minutes. So pop the body on for a quick test fit. The front sits pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, just making sure we're all in fully. There we go. Chassis is looking good. Happy with that. Making sure we're all lined up at the back, which we are. Bodywork's looking good on this. Can't wait to get this one finished. It's going to look fantastic. So the front one I'm happy with. That sits perfectly. I'm just going to pop the back one on gently. And as I can see, yeah, it's a little bit too high. So all done is I've whipped off that little um, space we put on, basically cut it in half, glued it back in place, and popped our suspension back in. Luckily, the rear one, really quick and easy to get back off. Couple of dabs more CA glue. Pop it in. Glue it in place. Repeat for the other side. And we're all good to go. So if you do this, do the rear one about half the size of the front one. And it should sit about right. So another body on. Another test fit. Some CA glue now. We're going to commit to gluing. So we need to make sure that not only are these located on the hub properly, that they are straight and exactly where we want them. Using the thicker Sega, you do get a little bit of work in time, luckily. But the front right height, absolutely spot on. And the rear one was pretty damn near where I wanted it as well. Probably could have gone a little bit lower on the back. But to be honest, I'm quite happy with that. So pop them on, make sure they're straight, make sure it sits right. Have a look, repeat for the other side. And there we go. I am more than happy with that ride height. That looks really, really good. Wheels look absolutely stunning. I love the Alpina rims. Really looking good. <coughs> there we go. Just make sure everything's straight level where we want it. The exhaust. We're going to have to just widen these points a little bit. I've done this on every single one of these kits I've built. It will go in, just takes a little bit of pressure to get it in there. So widen it, a couple of dabs of CA glue, and it's all good. It fits in there much, much better. There we go. Popped in place. So test fitted in, absolutely perfect. couple of dabs of glue. And we can pop in the exhaust. Like so. And there we go. Beautiful colour. Really, really nice. Uh, tailpipes look good. I think they stick out just about right. They sit in the volant just right. Need a little bit of tweakers to get them straight. But overall, pretty easy to do. Interior. Now, I've built the belt up. I've done it off camera because it takes a long time to do. I've done this before. We've got a full video on doing these on the Subaru. So I'll link that in the description. If you want to see me actually make some of these belts, there's a video in the description of the video on the Subaru build. But basically, 
all built exactly the same way. A couple of decals on, and then the decal on the dashboard in place. All pretty straightforward. I know a lot of people are daunted by the seat belts. Um, I do it in a nice, simple way. And like I say, I will link the video in the description. Um, there's no point in going through it all because it'll add another 10 15 minutes to this. Already pretty long video. Glue in place the steering wheel, steering column, now the seat as well. A little bit of say glue around the side. We've already got one seat in place. Do the driver's one first. We've got our dashboard in place temporarily, our gear sticks in place, glued in. I'm just going to pop it down. Very simplistic interior on this, so not a lot to show really at all. And then our roll cage as well. So what I've done, I've felt the belt through the roll cage a bit. A little bit off camera, I do apologise. And then with it kind of floating, we put a couple of dabs of CA glue on each of the mountain points for the roll cage. Push them home. Do the other side and then job done there. Dashboard in place, literally slotting through the roll cage. There we go. That's in place. And then our interior can literally be dropped in place. And there we are, pop in place. All we've done with the rear of the harnesses is tucked them in behind the roll cage um, to give the impression that they're attached there. Nice, simple, easy. I'm just going to pop the body on, put one test fit to make sure all the interior fits in place. And a little bit of a teaser because I'm only going to show it very, very quick. But there we go. So then, there we are. That's where we're at today. Uh, it's looking good. I'm happy how this is going. Uh, ride height's pretty much bang on. Good number, just half a mil lower on the back, but it just I think I would have wrecked it by doing it. So it's it sits pretty right to me. It looks right. There was, I think they're always going to sit a little bit higher on the back as a proper road car, kind of as opposed to a true race car. So I'm happy with that. So nice simple modification got it there. The red interior, black carpet, red roll cage, red seats. They look really good. Happy with those. And those wheels, just I love those wheels. They look absolutely spectacular. So part three will be up very soon. I want to get this one done um because i love this kit it's such a simple quick kit to work on it's a great mojo builder but the beauty of that is we get to do a bench update uh show the ferrari in this and then pick the next build which if you're a patron which we'll chat about in a second you'll get to discuss with me on wednesday at 7 p.m on an exclusive patron live feed now that doesn't mean you're missing out on anything like I say, there's no paywalls on this, but it is a live feed for the patrons for me to chat about the way it's going with that and that. So it is a perk of being a patron. Um, it's just one of those things. But you're not going to miss out because anything you've discussed on that will be discussed on my next bench update. So I'm planning the bench update probably around Thursday after we've done that. Uh, we can figure out the next build coming up. Uh, we've still got the P51 or F51 on the go. And um, we've got the, uh, I keep wanting to call it a Gundam, <laughs> the Warhammer Knight as well, which yeah, I think we'll put along with. Once you get that built, I think I'll enjoy it more. I'm not enjoying building it, if I'm not, not going to lie. Uh, but the F51, we'll get another part out. But I just enjoy my cars too much, so it's why I enjoy building. So, yeah, there we go. I'm full of cold at the minute. I feel absolutely dreadful. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle doing a 40 odd minute voiceover today, as you might have heard, a few coughs along the way, so I do apologise. Uh, the joys of having a six year old at school is they bring cold home, at least that's all I think, hope it is. Uh, now I just got a bit, a bit bunged up, a bit of a sore throat, uh, so yeah, I'll be alright. But there we go, so thanks for watching today. Now, Patreon, if you want to support the channel, you can do a monthly donation to Patreon, and that really, really helps me. Without that, I couldn't do these videos. There wouldn't be no videos, especially the way things are going at the minute. Uh, personal life gets in the way of everything, doesn't it? And uh, without the Patreon and support of everybody so far, these videos would have to stop. It's as simple as that. I came to this conclusion a while back, made that really awkward video, and thank you to everybody who has taken part. Your support is massively appreciated it really is so if you want to donate to that any there's all different kind of tiers from one pound upwards uh they've all got different perks and benefits um the link for that is in the description down below 
and there's a PayPal me link as well, should you wish to do a direct donation as well. But anything and everything is greatly appreciated. Um, not great times in a minute with the end of the pandemic. I think a lot of people are struggling, and it certainly hit myself and Hannah pretty hard. Not a sub story, just me being straight to the point, as I always am. But thank you, everyone, who's taken part. You're all absolute stars and legends. Uh, of course, check out ISM Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com. We got a lot of the products I show in this video. And most of the stuff shown in this video is linked in the description down below. If there's anything not in there or anything that needs updating, let me know in the comments and I'll sort it out for you. Uh, check out my Paul ISM Facebook page where all my personal modern work is shared. Again, there's links in the description down below. And there's links to the Offer Hangout group and the Live of the Bench page and the Group Bill page as well all down in the description so thank you very much everyone for watching today um it's monday today i'm gonna try and finish off the bmw i think and i'm gonna crack on and push through with this once this video is uploaded and uh, hopefully we'll get another video out in a couple of days and like i say live stream on wednesday evening for the patrons bench update on thursday for everyone so you're not gonna get left out don't think you get left out everything will be discussed um, and we can make a decision on our next build which I've kind of got an idea where it's going to be and uh, moving forward what we're going to do so thank you very much for watching today take care everybody, enjoy the rest of your day bye bye